Maybe this is what I've been missing. Football! <laughs> now got a slice named Robinson. I keep it on me if I'm the one he's got a problem with. Set the man down, good boy Chris Hansen. He have switch switches like Marilyn Manson. If you watch this channel, you gotta know how I feel about Charlie Brown by now, right? And if you don't watch this channel, it's okay. I, I don't watch this shit either. The peanut specials mean a lot to me. They have my entire life. I mean, yeah, you got the standard stuff like Christmas and Great Pumpkin, but I'm trying to give niggas bars about Happy New Year and Lucy Must Be Traded. See, you niggas ain't eating up on that. Get your money up, not your funny up, you heard? Big fucking move. Fuck out here. Four specials at a time, one video a month, all in order, all unrelated hip hop songs, hella slang talk, we going crazy. I'm about to show my ass. So this is every Peanut special reviewed, part one. It'll be fun and it, it won't be all sad, I promise. None of that so many tears Tupac shit. Yet. Okay, but if you're gonna do this, can you not call him the N-word this time? As a white person, it made me very uncomfortable. Huh? Oh, Charlie Brown? <laughs> That's my nigga. This ain't televised, they telling lies, we promise I won't. We've been patronized, they taking lives, I'm on my way home. Relax my mind about half the time, I'm watching cartoons for knocks, how I'm locked in my home. Of course they resemble my skin, wanna watch too. Hypnotizing, chanting, how I folly through the vibes. Okay, dreaming mama's proud as if she looks through his penny size. I'm a man of the house like Oscar. We deceive, I believe it, Oscar. James Earl, when I speak, I'm a fossa. Gotta swerve in the streets, never block the psycho. Feel more, just try to make you feel more. Through the halls, I felt scorns. Looking at me cuz I don't like what you like you feel torn should have smacked your lights like back you ain't seen pimpin before for the stars I shoot pimpin no boy you best set the score I know nobody else is gonna say it so I'ma be the one that has to say it the holidays are overrated the holidays are overrated and a Charlie Brown Christmas definitely the one that everybody knows. The special's been around forever. I feel like everything that could possibly be said about it may have already been said. If there's anything I could add, I could probably just like point out some things that people don't really know about it. Like it was originally sponsored by Coca-Cola. Notice in the broadcast that we grew up with when Snoopy swings off Linus and Charlie Brown, we only see Charlie Brown land. We don't see Linus. That's because Linus actually hits a Coca-Cola bottle. I understand why they cut it. It's like re-uploading an old video and reminding everybody that Skillshare is an online learning <laughs> So let's back it up a bit. When I was in high school, I got this book, The Art and Making of Peanuts Animation. If you get this shit, please be sure to take better care of it than I did. My dirty ass was lugging this around in my high school jam sport like my school ain't have bed bugs. We didn't have bed bugs, guys. I'm just joking. It was roaches. I remember reading about how everybody hated this special, including the network. The humor was too dry. There wasn't a laugh track. The animation was messy. The soundtrack? What the fuck was that soundtrack? That's terrible, Charlie Brown! Both Bill Melendez and I have a hard time watching it over the many Christmas seasons it reappears. For it seems full of inconsistencies, like the continuity error that marred the scenes that contained Charlie Brown's wooden Christmas tree. Sharp-eyed viewers will notice that the tree grows several branches between the tree lot. You can almost tell which parts of this were made during crunch time. Granted, the entire thing is they only had like six months to make it, but still. Like earlier on, there's a lot more poses, a lot more going on, less cycles, the characters stick to their models heavier. Is that the play rehearsal where everybody just kind of does whatever, anything kind of went. Characters jump around, lots of hold frames where it's just the mouths moving, some scaling problems. There's still some really nice looking bits, like I love the acting on Lucy here. I'm pretty sure it was done by Bill Littlejohn, but it ain't like I'ma check because research is for squares or rectangles. Sorry, bro. Charlie Brown hits the pitcher stance when he's about to throw the snowball compared to everybody else. It's like little touches like that, but it def gets really sloppy. Like watch Lucy just jump right in front of Linus here. Give me one good reason why I should memorize this. I'll give you five good reasons. But I think what makes this one so good is that it shines so bright through these imperfections. If this was animated in widescreen with HD colors and clean outlines, it'd probably be the grossest shit I've ever seen in my life. 
definitely not hating on what the specials became later but there's something so sincere in these earlier ones because you can literally see the human touch they feel really intimate that way it's kind of hard to explain even though i just explained it all right now there's no time for foolishness there's so many memorable moments so many quotables whenever you watch something and they reference charlie brown it most likely comes from this one Shit, I've been referencing these specials mad often in these videos, and I never even realized how often I do it. Ah, I've been kissed by a bitch, nigga. Get hot water. Get some disinfectant. Get some iodine. Oh, uh. Did I just use this as an opportunity to reuse one of my favorite transitions? Yes. I like to. I feel like there's just enough Snoopy in this and some of the later ones the nigga is kind of just like all over the place there's long spills where we just follow him and let the animation do the storytelling and that's not to say that i don't enjoy them just the same but what i really love is the kids i have some friends that mainly want to see snoopy and i get that too but this one i feel does a nice balancing act of giving us really funny snoopy scenes while also not letting them just like stop the whole damn special like when you got it popping with that lawn chair on thanksgiving while the animations kind of hit i love the pageant stuff i empathize with charlie brown while he's trying to direct this play they're not paying this nigga no mind this is what it's like to film a student film which I've made two of. Please, baby, please, baby, 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 please. Shermie, you're a shepherd. Every Christmas it's the same. I always end up playing a shepherd. And he was never heard from again. Y'all ever think about how awesome Pigpen is? He rarely gets to do anything, but this nigga's self-love be on a thousand. You're an absolute mess. Just look at yourself. On the contrary, I didn't think I looked that good. Everybody always makes fun of the dances. They always like parody my nigga five, but nobody talks about Violet. She been in that shit, my nigga. Look, look. hey, hey, hey. No, look at look, look at Schroeder. Now look, if we're ever to get this plan, nigga say, oh, bro, my fault. And I keep I keep thinking about how when Lucy yells, this nigga Schroeder just never hits the ground. The special finds its true identity after Charlie Brown and Linus come back with the tree. Son, just look at Charlie Brown as he eats all of this criticism. The nigga homies are a real life YouTube comment section and I feel him. Hey bro, review Daria! Lights please? The scene where Linus recites from the Bible is probably one of the most important scenes in animation and I didn't realize it until reading that book. Not only because it was the first time anything like this was done in a cartoon, but it's the simplicity and the staging. It means a lot to a lot of animation's best filmmakers. Linus's performance is something where less is more. That's a cliche, but you have to make sure that you're being true to the character and not simply moving something for the sake of moving it. You want to get out of the way of the performance, even as the performer. Something simply stated is often much more powerful than something elaborately stated. Speaking of meaning, commercialism is a big theme in this. Whether it be from Snoopy, from the play, or from the kids. I always get a lot of stupid toys or a bicycle or clothes or something like that. What is it you want? Real estate. We all know that Christmas is a big commercial racket. It's run by a big Eastern syndicate, you know. All of this clouds Charlie Brown's judgment of Christmas. We enter the special with him not really feeling the season, but we follow him becoming disillusioned with it. He's looking for something deeper at this point. Everyone else kind of just lost their way and don't care, they're content. But if you know anything about Charlie Brown, that nigga is definitely an overthinker, so this, this fucks with him like heavy. And him embracing the simplistic and the traditional inspires the kids in his neighborhood to do the same. There's already a dope video by Nostalgia Critic where he pretty much provides this as his thesis, but it really is a reflection of this special, right? Done by inexperienced artists on a shoestring budget, a project that nobody believed in ended up becoming one of the most important pieces of animated media ever. It's simplistic and rough around the edges, but it's sincere. And it's because of that sincerity where even though they tried to take it away from us, it changed lives and has still played every single year for over half a century. I'll never forget the day it was about three weeks before the show was to air, and we had never seen it in its entirety. So Bill and I and maybe 10 of his staff watched it. In the closing credits, they had misspelled Schultz. 
they had a T in it. They had to redo that right away. Bill turned to me and said, I think we ruined Charlie Brown. But Ed Levitt, one of the main animators, stood up and said, this show was going to run for a hundred years. Everybody thought he was nuts. It's not bad at all, really. Maybe it just needs a little love. I really like this transition and not enough of y'all saw the school video. Let me get my shit off. Bet, so we've made it to one that no one's heard of this early. This is gonna be fun. Charlie Brown's All-Stars. This one's definitely just the baseball special. It functions like a string of comics at first, doing as many jokes and cross dissolves as they can, but the plot kicks in around a seven minute mark. Charlie Brown's team is so fed up with losing that they all quit the damn team. So even this nigga Shermie said Charlie Brown gets off the losing. I think you get sort of a neurotic pleasure out of losing all the time. Hey, hey, my nigga, you get back here. That dwarf, that skinny chicken shit. But Charlie Brown actually winds up finding out through Linus that somebody wants to sponsor the team and get them uniforms. So now everyone's excited again. I don't think we should get involved with this, Snoopy. No one else will play baseball anyway. They're all doing other things. You better forget it, Charlie Brown. See you later. Uh, bitch, you just brought this to his attention. If y'all shouldn't do it, why did you say it? Hey, Tariq, this publishing company wants to sponsor your channel. What? Oh, wow, that's dope. I yeah, you shouldn't do it, though. They're kind of shady. This cameo was actually supposed to be Primshood Cinema. I just, I just emailed them too late. But at least now I can finally say that I got the draw Johnny two cellos. Hi Johnny. But then he finds out that the league won't fuck with a team with girls and a dog on it, so it's a dub. But he chooses not to tell them, hoping that it's motivation enough for them to win a game. They lost. Oh, we lost the game because of Charlie Brown. It amazes me how they're able to do stuff like this without designing a new character or showing a single member of the other baseball team. Yet it's still very believable. It reminds me of how Illumination was too pussy to hide the Wunstler's face in their Lorax. Like, it's possible to do these really bold decisions, you just gotta get a little creative. They're obviously still figuring things out here in terms of animation. This joint definitely gets a little sloppy sometimes. Or a lot sloppy. Actually, it's, it's all over the place, I'm not gonna lie. Charlie Brown, guess what? Mr. Hennessy was wondering if you'd like to get in a real league. I don't care. Ah. All right, let me just take this jacket off. I haven't reanimated this shot yet with the new design. I'm sorry. What the fuck is up with this shot? I saw this special for the first time almost 10 years ago, and I still think about it. Is this supposed to be like perspective? This nigga looks like a fucking statue. Despite how wonky the animation is, there's still a lot of really funny bits. I watched this team practice, see? They were terrible. And they have this loudmouthed girl in center field who can't catch a thing. They also have some animal at second base who can't even throw. And their pitcher is a kind of round-headed kid who is absolutely no good at all. And you, you scouted your, your own, own team. team! And there's also a couple of shots that do look great. I'm just fucking around. All of that charm is still here. I was trying to put myself in the shoes of a kid seeing this back then. We already saw these kids animated for the first time, but now we're seeing them in their normal clothes, in their normal routine. I think this actually complements the holiday specials, showing how starkly different this franchise handles the holidays. It like contrasts the atmosphere. Son, when I tell you that they hate this nigga in this one, I fucking mean it. Look how mad they get as soon as this nigga opens his mouth. Free to all rising from the dead and shit. The mob mentality in this one is fucking nuts. Why is Linus mad when he drops the ball that they aren't getting their uniforms? He was there when he got the news, what the fuck? And then he flips on them when they start talking shit about this nigga? Maybe it just wasn't communicated to whoever the animator was that he shouldn't be mad or something, I don't know. Play ball! But overall though, I think Charlie Brown's All-Stars is pretty fun. It's not amazing, but it is fun. 
it is funny it has a really sweet ending too there isn't a super lot to say about this one but it's worth to see at least once the specials like this that end up showing charlie brown's heart that despite how the other kids treat him he is the furthest thing from selfish he just wants everybody to be happy couldn't be me though my g i'm sorry yeah fuck them kids nigga hey good old charlie brown he never gives up Right on, man. You already know it's Ali Rock. I want to give a big shout out to my brother Reek for letting me be a part of this intro song. Yo, I love you. You're one of the uh, best brothers that I've ever had, brother. And you know that I support you. you watching your videos back to back on this side. Once again, I'm Ali Rocket. My new tape, Apollo Boy, is out right now. It is streaming everywhere. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for everybody that has supported me. Shout out to my cadets. Shout out to everybody that supports my brother Reek. Keep watching, keep watching, keep subscribing, keep liking. And um, I hope everybody does enjoy the intro song. We work really hard on it. So, um, shout out to Rick again, but you know, I love you, man. Guys, just for I'm fascinated by the night time. Boo, nigga. Oh god, Meg, you startled me. I'm sorry. Hitting two staple classics in one video. Next up is It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. You can tell right off the bat, this is where they finally figured out how they wanted these specials to look. There's still some really wonky drawings, but the characters feel whole in this one. They feel fully realized. You can notice the jump from the first time Snoopy dances on Schroeder's piano in the Christmas special to when he does it here. The acting on Linus and Sally when they're at the pumpkin patch is particularly great. A lot of really nice expressions, nuances in their movement. If you want to study just doing simple yet expressive design, this is definitely the place to go. I really love this on Sally, watch. Halloween is over and I missed it! Charlie Brown says what I think might be the funniest line in the whole series. When are you going to stop believing in something that isn't true? When you stop believing in that fellow with the red suit and the white beard who goes ho, ho, ho. We are obviously separated by denominational differences. Son, do you know what denominational differences are? That! Son, they're like eight. Why are they talking like this? Never jump into a pile of leaves with a wet sucker. Of course. What the fuck? <laughs> All right. I'll relax. I'm just... Just being immature. Yeah, Lucy, you should be good at this. You have the perfect mouth for it. Son, what? So let's back up a bit. This one is about the kids going trick-or-treating and hanging out at a Halloween party. At the same time, Linus prepares to meet the Great Pumpkin, who's a magical pumpkin nigga who shows up to extremely sincere pumpkin patches and gives toys to all of the kids. It's Sally's first year old enough to pop out, but she'd rather spend it with Linus and wait. What's going on here? What are you trying to do to my little sister? <clears throat> oh shit! The writing a letter trope actually comes from All Stars, but it's really only used for a quick joke about Charlie Brown's anxiety. This is the actual first time they do it. The scene where Linus is writing is insane. First, Charlie Brown comes up to talk to him, which is fine. It makes sense that his best friend is at his house. Then Snoopy, which okay maybe the homie brought his dog i don't know lucy lives there but why the fuck is patty here who are you who let you in here if they had shermie walk in i would have fucking shot that nigga there's gonna be a lot of shermie hate in these videos and i promise it's for no reason here goes sally ah uh, my sweet babu what the fuck lock your doors my nigga it's the first time charlie brown runs to kick the football too this is also the first appearance of snoopy as the world war one flying ace get used to this footage my nigga you finna see it in a lot of these specials they even reuse it in the boy named charlie brown cue the clip <laughs> sally's rant when the great pumpkin doesn't show up is insanely hilarious she's so mad son son just go to the store i'll buy you some candy it's right there you owe me restitution i love great pumpkin i watch it every year it's still fun it's still hilarious if we're talking about the main three it's definitely under the christmas one but 
It's a toss up between this one and Thanksgiving. I go back and forth in my mind. The best special is someone in this room. Who, me? Yeah, sure. Woohoo! There's something really sincere and real about Linus being the most educated and well put together kid in the neighborhood with this historical and biblical knowledge, knowingness of just always the right thing to say. But he's still just a kid. He still carries his blanket. He still believes in the great pumpkin. He's still gullible and stuck in his ways. This gets explored a lot more later on in some really smart ways. It's just kind of played for laughs here, but I really love this concept. It's like in Family Guy where they still treat Stewie like a baby sometimes. I was gonna sneak Family Guy in here somehow, by diggy. I should know my body by now. This is really great moment at the end where Lucy has an alarm set to go pick Linus up from the pumpkin patch. She picks him up, takes him home, tucks him in bed, and doesn't say a word. It's a really great moment. It shows the unconditional love that these siblings have. Like, yeah, my nigga, you're a dumbass, but you're my dumbass. Heart emoji, XD, rawr. See, Quentin? I got you. Hey, I think it's time for something new. I know what's the matter with you. You do? Sure. You're in love, Charlie Brown. You got me going in circles. Ooh, ooh, transition's going crazy today. You're in love, Charlie Brown. It's the last one we're going to go over for this video. It introduces Charlie Brown's interest in a little red-haired girl. And that's kind of it. Of the four in this video, this is the one that really low-key is about nothing. The first third of All Stars was just kind of them dicking around, doing whatever. But this one really has no story, no plot, no structure. It doesn't not make it fun and it doesn't make it weak or anything. But there isn't really much going on aside from a few character things. I notice you can talk to me. I have a pretty face. How come you can talk to me? Wasn't I the Christmas queen? No oh, shit, is that continuity I see? What about the Christmas queen, hmm? Charlie Brown's definitely at his saddest here. There isn't even anything really happening to him, but his anxiety triggers his depression, OD. It starts with him not knowing how to approach the little red-haired girl, and then it kind of morphs into all kinds of self-loathing. Those kids look like they're having a lot of fun. I wish they liked me. Nobody likes me. Shit like this is one of his many functions as a character. He's the embodiment, the vocalization of all of our insecurities. That's more what I meant. This special makes you think about that type of shit. It's borderline just a Charlie Brown character study. Plead my cause, O oh Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Deliver me from the hand of them that persecute me. My stomach hurts. Is this nigga praying? Son! It doesn't just stop with him though. There's a really real moment where Lucy gets upset at Schroeder so she leaves and does the therapy shit with Charlie Brown. But she brings all of her anger with her so now she's flipping out all crazy on him. Also, no, I did not edit this sound effect that's coming up. You men are all alike. You talk a lot of romantic nonsense. But do you ever discuss marriage? No! This looks like it's the first time that we actually see them in school. My report? Oh, yes, ma'am. I have my report. It's about the mountains and jungles of Africa. Come on, son. What the fuck? Lately, I've been thinking a lot about the flexible reality of these characters. It started with the Peanuts movie. Linus and Lucy are definitely siblings, and Lucy is older. But if that's the case, why the hell are they in class together? Is Lucy supposed to be older than Charlie Brown? If not, why is he in class with Linus here? Did Linus skip a grade? Fuck man, I don't know. Then when you get into the comics, it's a whole other can of worms. So I think I'm just gonna drop this here with no thesis. I could probably talk for 30 minutes about every reason why these two shots are hilarious, but eh. I don't, I don't really, really feel, feel like, like it. it. Also, I don't know what the hell this special has against kindergarten graduations, but whoever hurt y'all, I promise it's gonna be okay, my G. Kindergarten. Cap and gown. Graduation. 
I can't stand it. This special actually births the best Charlie Brown yo. There's the one that everybody knows, and then there's this one. This nigga sounds so fed up, son. I can't stop laughing every time I hear it. As I type this with a straight face. Oh yeah, this special has this shot, which people were losing their minds over for a little bit. I actually have no excuse for why it looks like this. I even checked the book, son. <laughs> this book doesn't have any answers. Oh shit, this is the first time we see Peppermint Patty, son. Little known thing about me, she's actually my favorite character. Sorry I couldn't pick someone obscure, guys. The goddamn Roy, motherfucking Peggy Jean. I just found out who Peggy Jean was last year. I hate it here. When I move on and find somebody new. You're in love, Charlie Brown is fine. There's a lot of interesting Charlie Brown character stuff, some nice quiet moments, but it's on the empty side. Sure, Great Pumpkin didn't really have anything to say, but it had momentum, you know? But hey, a little breathing room is nice sometimes. I forgot how sweet the ending to this one is too. It's always nice to see things coming up Charlie Brown's way and it's dope that they ended up doing it this early on. We don't see Shorty doo but we know she's feeling the kid. It's nice. Well, that's it for part one. Stay tuned, keep it locked here, send a Patreon for your ancestors and hold it down until next month when we hit the next four. Let's see how long I can keep this up, y'all. I'm trying. So, so, so. Sick. Good grief. How will I live until next month? <laughs>